The cybersecurity job market has never been tougher, but if you follow the principles that I'm going to lay out in this video, you will significantly improve your chances of securing a cybersecurity internship in 2025. If you're new here, my name is Day. I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon, and I started my career in cybersecurity a few years ago through an internship. I've since gotten other internship opportunities at companies like Intel, but even more so, and more importantly, I've turned that internship into multiple full-time offers and a pretty strong career now working as a security engineer at Amazon. So after doing this myself, and also helping multiple individuals break into the cybersecurity space, I've refined the process of securing a cybersecurity internship down into a few key principles. The reality is this the field is fiercely competitive but you've got to execute the right steps with precision if you're looking for a cybersecurity internship so let's begin with the very first principle but before that i invite you to join our discord community of almost 5,000 cybersecurity professionals including students who are also looking for cybersecurity internships we're constantly sharing advice and even job postings as well as reviewing resumes for those who are currently looking also subscribe to the cyberwalks unplugged newsletter where i share even more cybersecurity career tips that will be very helpful for those who want to get the internship and even after the internship finally be sure to like and subscribe as it helps a lot with making this content and allowing those who need it to find it. With all that out of the way, let's get into the very first principle. While building and developing the cybersecurity skills I'm sharing in this video, it's very important to do so using the right training platform like Cyber Defenders, who is sponsoring today's video. Cyber Defenders is a blue team training platform focused on the defensive side of cybersecurity. They provide training for those who want to learn, validate, and advance their cyber defense skills. As you guys know, I've completed their CCD certification and made several videos about their training, and I can honestly say only good things about the platform and what they have to offer. Which is why I'm excited to announce that Cyber Defenders has partnered with our channel to offer a 15% discount on the CCD and Blue Yard Cyber range, and this offer is available for the next two weeks when you use the special code displayed on the screen right here. Be sure to check them out using the link in the description, and a huge shout out to Cyber Defenders for their continued support of this channel. Now, let's get back to the video. The first principle is to craft a stellar cybersecurity resume. Now, you might feel like this is backwards because you need stuff to put on your resume. So yeah, that's the exact reason why I want you to start from here. Obviously, your resume will initially be very blank and filled mostly with your coursework. But as you progress with classes, projects, labs, and CTFs, you start to fill those in. And if you need any help getting started, you can check out our entry-level cybersecurity resume specifically crafted for this or reach out for resume help in the Discord link in the description. Now, the reason why your resume is fundamental is because every applicant has a resume, but most of them are subpar because they aren't optimized for the cybersecurity internship roles they're applying for. It doesn't matter how skilled you are if your resume fails to communicate your abilities clearly. I already have a detailed video covering resume crafting. It'll be linked in the description as well as a card on the screen. But for the purpose of this video, here are four non-negotiable elements you need to focus on for your cybersecurity resume. First and foremost, use a clean professional template. You can get my recommended template via the link in the description, or you can find suitable ones on platforms like Overleaf, Microsoft, Microsoft Word, or even Google Docs. There's several templates out there. And from reviewing several resumes on our Discord, I've seen too many resumes ruined by distracting colors, unnecessary graphics, symbols, or even adding a picture of their face on it. These elements don't add a value. They simply take it away. Stick to a simple professional design that communicates your seriousness. Next, lead with your most relevant experience. I understand that many of you are students and may not have much professional experience yet. That's completely fine, but you must highlight whatever technical or cybersecurity related experience Experience you do have. Employees are looking for demonstrable skills, so prioritize listing labs, projects, certifications, CTFs, or even volunteer work. If you've been part of a cybersecurity club, engaged in a capture the flag competition, or worked on independent projects, that's completely gold, highlighted as relevant experience there. For instance, let's say you were involved in a project where you set up a small scale security monitoring system using some open source tools for your local community, whatever the case may be, that is incredibly relevant. Very similar to my cybersecurity detection and monitoring lab which helped me a whole lot as you outline it make sure to describe the tools you used the problems the outcomes and the skills that you gained from that were you analyzing logs for suspicious activity were you performing vulnerability scans were you doing a penetration test be explicit about your project even if you don't have formal job experience your resume should emphasize your technical competencies when you're detailing your experience use powerful action verbs and words like conducted developed analyzed implemented there's several out there ask chat gpt look 
on Google. And also, finally, cut the fluff. There's no place on a cybersecurity resume for unrelated hobbies and things like that. Reserve that for the interview where you get to show your personality. I've reviewed countless resumes where candidates list hobbies like playing tennis or gaming. This isn't helpful at all, and it distracts from your technical skills and reduces the recruiter's focus on your strengths as a cybersecurity candidate. Keep it technical, keep it focused. Principle two, master technical skills and building projects. The second principle is all about mastering technical skills and doing projects, not just conceptual stuff. So unlike software engineering where platforms like LeetCode or HackerRank dominate, cybersecurity internships involve a broader set of skills when it comes to interviewing as well as doing the job. You can actually expect assessments that require log analysis, scripting, some basic malware analysis, deobfuscation, and even solving CTF style challenges. In these cases, it would not be about knowing what the CIA triad is, it would be about your ability to think like a defender, a builder, or an attacker. So if you're in college right now, start preparing immediately. Don't wait until you're actively applying for internships because these skills take time to develop. You should be spending time on platforms like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Let's Defend, Cyber Defenders, Blue Team Labs Online, and even engaging in real CTF events on sites like Pico CTF or whatever CTF events you're available to join. And if you'd like to join our CTF team, we've got one in our Discord, join the Discord, it will be linked in the description below. Ultimately, each platform will expose you to practical scenarios that are more reflective of what you might face in the field and also might expect in interviews. For example, for a lot of my interviews, including my current and previous roles, I was required to demonstrate my ability to either analyze some security logs or write a Python script or threat model a crowd environment or hypothesize a detection idea or a threat hunt. So many other practical scenarios there that are very possible for interviews as well as what you'll be doing in the job. This was just something I could learn overnight and thankfully I had already had some experience with Splunk and other sim tools for a while. So these came a little bit easier for me. And that's what you need to aim for, proficiency that is built over time, not crammed over a short weekend. Focus on the core skills. This is where the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule comes in. This is the idea that 80% of outcomes are the result of 20% of causes. This is a widely used principle in many fields, including business, economics, and problem solving. But I'd like to apply it for cybersecurity, in this case, your job application, job search, and skill building process. So for you, as a cybersecurity candidate looking for an internship, this will mean prioritizing essential skills like network security, network analysis, scripting, specifically Python, Bash, or PowerShell, understanding basic penetration testing and attacks, and log analysis. Again, there are several platforms with structured labs and courses I can guide your learning, but you have to be strategic with what you're learning. So to help you with this, I already made a video on all the amazing cybersecurity training and lab platforms out there. So if you're looking for something, it will most likely be there. Check it out. It will be linked in the description as well as a card somewhere on the screen. So if you're not proficient at some of the basic things, make it a priority to get hands-on experience. I actually made a tweet about this recently and listen up, especially since most of you will be college students. This is what it says. You and only you are responsible for your education, not school, not your professor, not your mentor, Mentor, not your course advisor, not your manager, not your parent. You blaming your lack of education on someone else is lazy and disrespectful to the free body of knowledge available today. There are so many resources out there. Pick one and learn the basic skills. Spend the time learning how to analyze network packets with Wireshark, run vulnerability scans, learn Splunk, write basic scripts. You can learn these foundational skills as a student and once you have them, your ability to tackle more complex tasks will improve dramatically and you won't be stumbling if you have an interview scenario where you have to do this. The other crucial aspect of this principle is building projects. For those who have been following my content for a while, you're well aware that I've been a strong advocate for cybersecurity projects for several years now. These projects are not just resume fillers. They are practical demonstrations of your skills and your ability to take initiative with your learning. They show potential employers that you're not just learning theory, but you're applying your knowledge in real world scenarios and documenting it too. So whether it's setting up a home lab, creating a network monitoring system, or developing a custom security tool, these projects can set you apart from other candidates who may only focus and have theoretical knowledge. I've had several interview scenarios, including the one that landed me a cybersecurity engineering internship offer at Intel, simply just turn into conversations about my technical projects. This happened because I had worked hard and extensively on these projects and also showcased them on my online portfolio. So create projects and showcase them on your portfolio. If you need ideas for projects, I've already made a video about this. Check it out. It will be linked in the description as well as on a card on the screen. The bottom line is that you're putting yourself 
way ahead of your peers by getting these hands-on skills. This, specifically this, is how you will stand out in interviews by showing that you have hands-on experience, not just theoretical knowledge, and also that you can take the initiative of your own career and education into your own hands. Principle three, timing is crucial. Know when to apply for internships. You see, timing can make or break your internship search. From what I've seen and experienced, the peak period for securing cybersecurity internships is typically in the fall, specifically around October, November, and December. This is when companies are actively recruiting for the following summer. And if you want a shot at these positions, you need to start preparing and applying around July or August. Even if you find yourself applying later, don't assume that all the opportunities are gone. Positions typically can open up at any time and you should always be ready to seize them and interview for them. The internship offer I got from Intel, I landed that in June, of 2021 just two months before the start date everyone told me that it was too late but i proved them wrong with that offer but the truth is this you need to be persistent and keep your applications and interview skills active year round another thing that you should know is that in this competitive market referrals are king so if you're serious about landing an internship you need to learn how to leverage your network i've gotten several roles interviews and job offers simply through referrals if you don't have a network build one start by attending industry events or if you're not up for that join our Discord community. We literally have multiple people handing out referrals all the time. And of course, you can use LinkedIn to connect with other professionals. The mistake that many people make is they're solely relying on online applications. Now, while it's necessary to apply online, the most effective strategy is to get your resume in the hands of a decision maker. And that's only possible with referrals. Also, after applying, Try to follow up with a message on LinkedIn or via email. Personalize it. Mention the role you're applying for and how your skills might align with the requirements. Some of these small extra steps can dramatically increase your chances of getting noticed for the job. Principle four, target the right roles. One of the biggest mistakes I see candidates making is applying indiscriminately to every possible company, every major tech company, Google, Microsoft, Meta, without having the experience or skill to back it up. I'm not saying don't apply, but listen to this. If you're a freshman or a sophomore with no form Formal experience. Truth be told, some of these companies are not your best bet, quite honestly, except you're somewhat exceptional. Here's my recommendation. Instead, focus on local firms, mid-sized businesses, and startups. They might not offer the same brand recognition, but they provide invaluable hands-on experience. Let me share a practical example of myself. When I was first looking for internships as a college freshman, I was frustrated after applying to hundreds of top-tier firms and companies without getting a single response. So what did I do? I took a different approach. I started researching smaller companies within the local area and even surrounding cities, and these roles were typically less competitive and and offered great practical exposure. This led to me applying for, interviewing, and landing my first internship at a company called Benefit Mall, which actually recently got acquired by Truist. So if you want to identify these opportunities, use tools like Google Maps to find local businesses, check your local job boards, and network within your local community. You'll find that smaller firms are often looking for interns, but they don't invest heavily in advertising these roles, but these hidden opportunities can be your entry point into the field. Do not underestimate the value of these roles. Every single skill you pick up will build the foundation for your future career. And then as you gain more experience, you can adjust your strategy. Once you have one or two internships on your resume, you can start targeting strategically mid-sized companies and even larger firms. But always still keep in mind to try to get a referral or find a hiring manager's contact. Quote applications will always be a gamble. Networking will always be your best play. Principle five, learn how to be consistent and build effective habits. If no one will, I will be the first person to tell you this. You're not going to make it far with anything in life if you don't have the right habits and consistency. You need to learn how to show up, especially on the days you don't feel like it. The journey will be hard, but I guarantee you it's very well worth it. You see, in cybersecurity, building skills and achieving success is all about consistency. It's not enough to sporadically work on your technical skills or only prepare when interviews are approaching. You need to develop a daily or weekly routine that reinforces your learning alongside school and keeps you sharp because the field evolves rapidly and so should your skills. Figure out how to set aside dedicated time each day or week to work on different aspects of your cybersecurity skill set. Maybe you spend Monday evenings working on networking fundamentals, Tuesdays practicing scripting, and maybe Wednesdays doing hands-on labs on platforms like TryHackMe or Hack the Box. Establishing a routine not only helps you build competence over time, but also makes the process less overwhelming, especially given that you're going to be balancing all of these things with your regular school coursework and workload. Effective habits also mean continuous improvements. Review what you've learned regularly and seek feedback. Just like 
physical fitness, consistent effort in cybersecurity training leads to gradual but lasting results. Over time, this consistency builds into confidence and expertise, which you can leverage during your interviews and also eventually on the job. Principle six, master the art of interviewing. Be technical and personable. All right, so having technical skills is not enough. You need to know how to communicate them effectively in an interview. Too many candidates focus solely on the technical side, neglecting to develop their soft skills, which are equally important. Employers want to know that you can not only solve problems, but also articulate your solutions clearly and also work well within a team. So during interviews, don't just answer the question, explain your thought process. Employers actually appreciate candidates who can walk them through how they approach the problem, why they chose a particular solution, and how they would implement it. Think star format. As crazy as it may sound, you can practice this by verbalizing your approach while solving problems, even when you're alone. The more you practice, the more natural it will feel during the actual interview. I know it sounds crazy, but if you're like me, when I incredibly lacked social and conversational skills, what you can do is practice in front of a mirror. Practice while you're driving. Practice under your breath. Just practice. Equally important is also being personable. Try to make a connection with your interviewers. Show enthusiasm for the role and the company. Research the company beforehand so you can ask thoughtful questions after the interview is over. If the interviewer mentions a recent security incident or a tool they use, express genuine interest and share your thoughts or relevant experiences with these things. This shows that you're actually engaged and proactive, and these qualities can also make you stand out. Now, I know some interviewers are actually stuck up, and that is fine. Truth be told, they're probably someone you wouldn't want to work with, so just charge them to the game. And also, if you struggle with interviews, conduct mock interviews with your friends, your mentors, you know, family, or even other professionals. And again, join our Discord, we can also help you with that. It's very important to be comfortable under pressure in interviews and practice until you can explain technical concepts clearly and concisely. A bonus tip for you, if you want to, you can also send follow-up emails after the interviews. Sometimes people don't care about it, they don't respond to it, but this helped me a lot when I got my first internship. I sent follow-up emails to every single interviewer and they actually liked that because I went back and researched some things we talked about and shared my thought and knowledge about it and it was a really great impression on them. So try it if you want to. All right, and there you have it. This is your comprehensive guide on how to secure a cybersecurity internship in 2024. This is in a field where you can afford to be passive, you need to be proactive, strategic, consistent, and relentless. Like I already said, start by crafting a resume that highlights your most relevant skills and experiences, work backwards from there, build practical hands-on projects, do CTFs, and all those things that will make you stand out, develop your technical skills, network vigorously, apply strategically, and most importantly, keep learning. Now, you'll also see that I didn't mention anything about certifications because that's the cherry on top. If you can, go for more practical certifications. I have several videos about that. And always remember that if you're truly serious about landing your first internship, you need to take action. Follow these principles and you'll set yourself up for success. It would not be easy, but it will be very well worth it. If you're looking for more detailed guidance, again, join our Discord. Happy to help out. Thank you for watching. If you found this video valuable, check out this playlist I put together for you just for cybersecurity career advice.